Hey, Zidoraga here, coming to another video review. Today I'll be taking a look at one at the 1 to 100 scale Master Grade High New Gundam version Katoki. So to start things off, here's his size compared to it. Um, yeah, uh, he's pretty big for a 1 to 100 scale. Let's just get this out of here. His colors are rather unique for a Gundam. Mostly white with some much darker blue than is coming across on camera. Dark gray. A little bit of green. And then some clear parts and a lot of decals. And these water transfer decals suck. I hate these things. But they do make the kit look pretty cool. Although I think I would have preferred regular stickers. I do not like water transfer decals. You notice how far forward this guy is leaning. That's because he is so back heavy he will not stand without a support. If you don't have him leaning this far forward. So as far as posability goes, it's okay. But hampered just by the pure weight of him. His head is on a ball joint in the in the actual head itself, back and forth, tilt just a little bit, move side to side, and move back and forth. There is a light up feature in a um, LED unit that goes in here and lights up his eyes, but unfortunately, well, I will show it to you, but just not yet. There is a series of ball joints and hinges that allow the arm to move back and forth and in and out at the body as well as up and down. They can go all the way around. Shoulders can go out to the side that far. Swivel all the way around just below the shoulder. Bend at two joints in the elbow. There is a bit of a hinge going on in the wrist. There are two ball joints in the wrist, one here and one here. So side to side, in and out, swivel, and then this to get the hands angled down. The hands are that new real grade-esque hands that have quite a lot of posability. Ball joint and then hinges all throughout the fingers. So you can get some pretty dynamic poses going on, which is neat. And of course, a series of ball joints for the thumb. The waist has a side-to-side -side pivot, and then or a side-to-side -side hinge, and then a pivot, but not a big one. There is a, pan a panel in there that gives you a very minute ab crunch. This large thruster can move up and down on a bit of a ratcheted hinge. These binders can move in and out, and up and down a little bit, as well as back and forth just a hair. These thrusters are on ball joints, so they can move all over the place. These tanks can move up and down and swivel if that does anything for you. The uh, front skirts are on ball joints, so they can move up and down, in and out, all that good stuff. Side skirts are on also on ball joints, but their range of motion is a little bit more limited. And the back skirts are the most limited because of these tanks, but they do have the same range of motion. Oh, the cockpit can open, and there are two ways. You can take the actual hatch and pull it out, angle it up, whoa, and pop it off. It just slides onto that bar there. Or... You need a tool for this, but you can pop open the cockpit hatch there, which is neat. The legs can move forward all the way. Can't really move back very well. 
It can move out to the side pretty good. Swivel just below the hip. Bend that far at two joints in the knee with some pretty good arm movement. There is a hinge up in the ankle that allows it to move back and or move side to side. And a large hinge in the ankle itself allows the foot to move back and forth. And then another swivel inside the foot. The uh, front of the foot can move up and down. And then there are these little clamps that can come down to act as sort of... Whoa! Of course. So you can just fold these down. And they can be used as anchors in various poses. So a very poseable kit, but he has the same issues as a lot of the real grades, where many of his parts aren't super securely attached. Now he actually can transform, sort of. He has a powered up mode, and so to access that, the white parts on the shoulder armor come down and flare out. So not a whole lot, but it's something. This large blue part slides up and out. So let me just do that on the other side. So it's a rather minor change, but it is noticeable. This white section on the torso comes out. These blue panels on the front skirts slide, swivel up. If I can get this around the camera. These white panels flip up to reveal vents. These blue panels flip up to reveal even more. Come on. These blue panels on the legs come out. On the sides, these come out and flare to the side. Come on. And then this booster comes out, so up and out. And out. And out. And there you have him with that same armor transformation gimmick as the Katoki Sazabi. I will admit it looks very cool, but he is just a pain in the neck to pose. Now, of course, he does have accessories. <laughs> He comes with a long, clear stand with a lot of little joints there. This foot is posable. Now, one thing I want to talk about before I ta uh, move on to that is he has these arms that can plug into the sides of this stand, and the reason for that will become apparent later. Now the stand has two shapes. This is the primary one, and what it is for is you plug it into, let's see if I can get this out of the way, a space here in the back. Do this in front of the camera. Come on. And it allows him to stand no problem because it acts as a third foot and keeps him from falling backwards he also has a rocket launcher which is very nicely detailed you can just take the barrel extend it out Extend it down. Looks very neat. Getting him to hold it is 
a bit interesting. It's got that same peg system that was invented with the 3.0 RX782. There is just a tab here in the grip that you fold out. And you can fold it to either side to be equipped into either hand. And then... In the hand itself, if you open it up, there is a tab you can fold down in the palm of the hand. And then these two tabs just need to line up and match with the shoulder to make sure everything works correctly. Come on. And then you can just wrap the fingers around it. So, pretty neat. Let's just get this out of there. It, of course, can be stored on the kit. In the backpack, there is a tab you can, or a clip, you can fold down here get it. That goes into a peg on there. It's very tight. In fact, worryingly so. But it can be stored back there. Also, if you pull this panel forward, you can fold this down and reveal... Come on. Out. Out, I say. A minigun. And one thing that's amusing about the minigun is he has these blue beams, which are for the beam sabers, which I'll show in just a little bit. But the posts, the post for the beam saber can actually go into the minigun. Because why not? So, speaking of the beam savers, he comes with three of them. They're fairly simple. Just like the gun, there is a port and a post. Make it meet in the middle. And there is a tab in here that you fold out. And then just slide that into the hand. And it's actually very secure in there. Now, this can be stored in various places. For this arm, if you fold down this blue panel and fold out the white panel, there is a groove in there that you can slide the beam saber into. Close that up. Close it up. There you go. And then for the binders, got to readjust. Fold that up, and the beam sabers can just plug onto posts in there. And they do so very tightly. and just stores like that. He also has, if I can get him positioned correctly, his beam rifle. Nothing really to it, it just is what you see there. Again, getting him to equip it. Just fold out the same tab as the rest and put it into his hand. Gonna make sure that this finger goes into the trigger guard. Come on. And then 
just wrap the fingers around it. And there he is holding the rifle. Next we have the very big shield. Lots of decals on this one. And it is equipped very simply. There is a square slot on the arm, square tab here, and this is a ball joint, so it can go all the way around, swivel, can also come out to extend, and a swivel there. So just plug that into there. And there he is, equipping the shield. Now you can take the foot off of this stand. Come on. And he has a separate stand that has, I believe, the new symbol as the base. And there is a keyed hinge here. So just get that lined up. And you can have him airborne. Hmm, I gotta raise the camera again. And this is where the last accessory he has comes in. His fin funnels. And these have just very large decals on there. And they have the two modes. They have their stored mode. And then you just fold out these hinges. And they're ready to fire. And this is where these arms come in. These arms have ratcheting joints here. A post here that allows it to swivel. Another ratcheting joint here. And a ball joint up here with a tab that goes into the slot in the thruster. And now he can have them deployed. And they can be stored very easily. There are little notches on these hinges that line up with notches here in the binders. So just get all those lined up. And if you'll give me a moment, I'm going to get these all plugged in. And there he is with all six fin funnels attached. And this adds new posability. There is a hinge here, as well as a hinge here. So you can get these splayed out in any way you choose. So that's pretty cool. I prefer to usually just flop them down like that. And yeah, that pretty much does it for the 1 to 100 scale Master Grade High New Gundam version Katoki. I really only have one thing to say about this model. I hate water slide decals. Do not use them. Ever. <laughs>